Today, I will explain the mysterious and uncertain story of Marvin A. Clark. From a successful man to a missing one, today we will dive into his mysterious story. Marvin Alvin Clark is a mysterious case. There are many things we still don't know about him. One of those things is something you might think is the bare minimum in a missing person's case. That thing is we don't even know his birthday. One thing that is for certain is that he was married. He also had four children with his wife. During his life, he worked as a farmer and as a sheriff. He was a sheriff in Nebraska and Oregon. Later, when he was around 70 years old, he moved to Tigard, Oregon. It is assumed he moved there for retirement because 73 was the average age of retirement in the 1920s. And he moved there in 1926. On October 30th, he decided to travel to Portland, Oregon, which is about 10 miles away. It was widely believed he was going to see his daughter. Around two days later, his wife called his daughter to see if he had made it to her house. But when she called, she found out that not only he had not come, but also his daughter did not know he was coming. After this, the search of Marvin A. Clark started pretty rapidly, and many police departments in the area were told to watch out for him. Eventually, they put out a $100 award. This is equivalent to around $1,500 today. His family was worried because they thought he might have been killed by someone who didn't like him from when he was sheriff. Later, there was a letter that was sent to Marvin's son, who was about 200 miles away from Portland, from Marvin. No one knows what was in the letter except for Marvin's mother. She read it and it caused her to think that he had left because of mental problems. This means he probably didn't even mean to leave, rather it was because of his mental illness. He also didn't take his coat, which was unusual for him, showing further proof of mental illness. Later, in 1986, there was a body found 20 miles away by some loggers. What was found by him was a rusty revolver and a penny dated from 1919. The penny places the body around the same time that Marvin went missing. The body had a gunshot in it, so it was ruled a suicide. Later, the granddaughter of Marvin said that it may have been him because of the close proximity of the body to their house and the fact that many family members told her that he went through a serious depression because he was paralyzed. Later, the medical examiner told her that the body looked to be younger than Marvin would have been around his death. Around 25 years later, Dr. Nietzsche Vance, a forensic anthropologist at the Oregon State Medical Examiner's Office, came across the case of Marvin and the unidentified body from 1986. She would submit the DNA of the skeleton to the Center for Human Identification at the University of North Texas to see if it was a match to Marvin Clark. They would eventually make a DNA profile from the identified body. Sadly, after comparing the DNA to his family members, it was determined that the DNA was not of Marvin Alvin Clark. This was the last lead in the case of Marvin. His story is one of mystery, and because of that mystery, it is one of the oldest missing person case in the United States of America, if not the oldest. Sadly, it will probably never be known what happened to him because it happened so long ago. Anyways, I hope you all have a great day. If you like the video, make sure you like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. I don't care. Peace.